And a definition of a value chain, a very simple one. You're simply trying to transform raw materials into a product that meets the needs and wants of your, your final customer. But there are two dimensions to this. There's the actual process of the value chain itself, converting raw materials to finished goods. And then there's the business services around it, the, the, what we call the secondary dimension. And neither functions obviously very well without the other. Research has confirmed that SMEs that participate in global value chains grow and become more competitive. The problem though then is how do they integrate? We have a huge number of suppliers that are fighting over themselves to deal with with lot less buyers. And in a developing country context, as you will know, most SMEs are themselves second and third tier suppliers. So, so the challenge is even to get them to be first tier suppliers. So the first point that I want to make is that we need to stop looking at SMEs like they're one and the same thing. They have different needs and if we look at the micro enterprise, we look at the small enterprise, we look at the medium enterprise, there's a different orientation that needs to be applied to them. Same thing. The second point is that we need to focus on the collective efficiency and make the appropriate interventions. The third point is what I would refer to as the model of coordination. And that needs to be strongly rooted in the public-private sector partnership that we've spoken about. Just to conclude, um, some characteristics of successful so-called SMEs that have integrated into global value chains. They themselves use multi-purpose technologies, which is very interesting because often we're told that they don't necessarily have the resources, so they, but they creatively find ways to use multi-purpose technologies. Secondly, they themselves outsource. They don't try to do everything themselves. The SMEs themselves outsource to other SMEs, which confirms the need to develop partnerships. And the third issue is that they display characteristics of strong cooperation, both upstream and downstream. They don't try to do things by themselves all of the time. Uh, how do SMEs get the information and the necessary assistance to integrate uh, global value chains? The best practices approach uh, we uh, have identified in our uh, work at ANTA, both at the policy analysis level but also by working with SMEs, is that uh, it's a part of an overall competitiveness program. I'd like to cite here the case of Colombia, for example, who has run a competitiveness program since 92 and became a state policy. So despite the very, various change in government, this competitiveness program uh, uh, were carried out by different administrations. What is this interesting is the involvement of the private sector in competitiveness program. Uh, so it was not only a government initiative, but it was a, really a public-private partnership. What does it bring to the table? It brings that mapping of the global value chain is an initiative that cannot only be carried out by the government or by massive institutions. It needs to involve from the start the private sector. The mapping of value chain, why is it interesting? We have heard uh, in the plenary talking about uh, market access, but in fact, if we take an example which is often quoted in, in the room, uh, uh, I was there before, uh, very often, textile and garments. We look at the, really the segmentation of the value chain, and we know that the raw cotton or the raw textile producer only uh, value added is about less than 10%. Whereas the garment production uh, is over 50%, and then the, the very high value add is where the design component comes in. So while we're focusing on uh, 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 market access, we forget that mapping out the value chain, we can identify segments of the market where the beneficial of uh, supply upgrading will bring about not only ESPO growth, but new jobs. And you're now talking about success factors. Ah, oh, we need to do the business environment, and then there's the business strategy, and then there's the linking the multinational with the local SME, and then there's attracting foreign direct investment, and then there's upgrading the SME in a partnership, etc. Well, when do I, as the manager of my small business, have time to do any of these things? We are approaching the government to create the 
the right business environment. And as I told before, if the government approaches to build competitiveness for its, co its own country, then at the territorial level, there will be a partnership program to uh, do all this. And, and if it, there is a concerted effort, this SME will find the right means to become a partner at the, at the territorial level. In both developed and developing countries, you have a significant increase in, the, in female employment. Um, in many countries, 50% or more of the labor force is female. Um, and even in countries where you've had developing countries, traditionally very low levels of, of female employment, that's rapidly increasing 30%, 40%. The first one I want to talk about, by ethical sourcing, I'm broadly looking at fair and ethical trade. The, the move towards more ethical consumption, which is really a response, I think, to increasing consumer pressure um, for uh, uh, better standards, better social origins of what uh, consumers buy. Fair trade currently, and I come from the UK, the rate, it's small niche, probably around 1%. It varies on the product, 1% to 3% in terms of the total market share. That's small. It's the rate of growth that's key. In the UK at the moment, it's between 40 to 50% annual rate of growth year on year in the fair trade market, and a massive increase in the number of types of products which are being sold through fair trade. If through through enhancing ethical sourcing, producers can find new niche markets that potentially, and niche markets where they are given um, support in, 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 in acquiring a larger share of the value chain, that is a, pot a potential and important and growing niche market for producers in, develop, in developed countries, certainly. Playing the, the ethical sourcing game, can't that cut both ways in that uh, consumers who think eth um, along ethical lines might also equally say, well, this product from Zambia is done by a women's cooperative and it's fairly traded and the producers are getting a good price, but it had to fly X thousand kilometers to get here and as an ethical consumer, I'm going to buy local. And therefore, is there a risk in trying to push the ethical sourcing? So I'll take one example, which is of Kenyan flowers. And I haven't got the exact figures in me, but there's a lot of publicity about not buying Kenyan flowers because they're air freighted in. You should buy uh, Dutch flowers because they come, or flowers from Holland because they come by sea. A proper analysis has just been done. And if you take into account all the production emissions of uh, carbon production emissions of Dutch flowers are way in excess, including the transport, are way in excess of Kenyan flowers. So I think this is an argument that needs a lot more unpacking uh, from a purely political perspective. Producers in developing countries have been told for centuries that they have to focus on exports. To so turn around now and say, but we're not going to buy them because of air freighting, I'm sorry, I don't agree. 